people don't trust them because I think there's, they feel that there's a reason that, you know, that they would be biased. You know, obviously Norfolk Southern has an interest in limiting its liability. So people wanted to know who to trust in the days, weeks, and months following that toxic train derailment in East Palestine. Some started calling for independent water testing, but no one really knew what that meant. So we took a water test kit to the areas impacted, looking to find out if there is still something in the water. KDK investigator Megan Schiller joins us to explain how this independent testing worked. Megan. Ken and Christine, we teamed up with a Pittsburgh biologist and wanted to answer one question. Would independent water test results look any different than the results state agencies were publishing at that time? The answer is yes. Just four miles downwind of the toxic train derailment sits a small watershed. Justin Johnston handpicked this spot. VOCs mm -hmm. are volatile organic compounds. Mm -hmm. Those and are the main things everyone's worried about. Yeah, that's the vinyl chloride. With his hard hat, waders, and water testing kit in tow, Johnston leads us beneath the road to Coal Bank Run. Watch your step coming down here. Johnston owns Big Pine Consulting in Pittsburgh and does environmental planning and studies. Immediately, he notices more life in the water than the last time he was here. There's some small minnows, say prinids, and then there's aquatic insects, the family's gadidae, the little water striders, water walkers, Jesus bugs, whatever you want to call them. That's good, though. Yeah, something. It's always good to see life. We start collecting water samples right away. First, the big jars. So that's the triple rinse, and now I've got a sample, but I need to take this sample and actually put it in those other little jars. Pouring from the big jar, we start filling the labeled test tubes for VOCs, SVOCs, diesel range organics, and dioxins. And then you look at the cap and you should see no bubbles. No bubbles. No bubbles, and you tip it, no bubbles. No. And they say to do this three times. And that's it. That's a sample number one. Johnston first tested the water here a few weeks ago, and today we're repeating it for a reason. This for was today. one of the sites that had SVOCs, had the highest number of SVOCs, so I wanted to do the whole suite at this one again. SVOC stands for semi-volatile organic compounds. The SVOCs uh, that I found, they're also called poly polyaromatic hydrocarbons. PAHs, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, or whatever, whichever word you want to use, PAHs is the acronym. That's what we found. Most of them are carcinogen. So we really need to pay attention to them because even in small amounts, they could be dangerous. That's just one of the reasons Johnston decided to pay for this testing on his own. Thousands of dollars. Yeah, it is expensive. Uh, but, you know, I, I was curious. I wanted to know the results myself. The first time, he found 11 substances in the water, six from incomplete combustion, consistent with that plume we all saw from the controlled burn. And five of the six on this list are probable carcinogens, he says. Now, the catch is this. The Ohio EPA's report didn't detect that. I thought mine would look exactly the same, but they didn't. And the reason is simply detect levels. Johnston uses ALS Laboratory and believes the state agency uses PACE Analytical. Whatever is happening in the PACE Analytical Lab, their detect levels are four times higher than what ALS groups minimum detect levels. He doesn't know why different labs use different detect levels, so we asked Pace and learned these detect levels do differ across labs and they're expected to fluctuate for a number of reasons. Pace says labs are required to reassess their levels each year. A lot of people assume that just because something says non-detect that it's not there, but really it just means it's not there in a level that's above the minimum detect level. You can't say for sure that what you found is because of the train derailment, but it's right. highly likely. I mean, I don't even if I have to say highly. I mean, if it were me and I had pets, I would not want them playing because I know they would drink this water and I wouldn't want my pets drinking this water. So that's just one watershed and one set of data. Coming up tonight at six, we are talking about the results of the samples that you saw us collecting in that video. Did the numbers go up? Did they go down? What did we find? And what about the other creeks and streams nearby? From Leslie Run to the Ohio River, we're breaking down the numbers for you at six. I'm Megan Schiller, KDK News. Yeah, very interesting. Looking forward to that. Thank you, Megan.